and uh, I'd like to introduce on bass, phenomenal musician, Mr. Dave Carpenter. Dave? Well, I always uh, started out playing music, you know, because I loved music. I just wanted to play. Um, I wanted to be like people I admired, you know, people like um, bass players, Jaco Pistorius, and Ron Carter, Eddie Gomez, those kind of guys. You nice know. choice. Um, uh, but, you know, I, as I got into my teens and 20s, I realized there was an industry and there was, you know, there's a the music business can be very lucrative and you can make a lot of money. And that was the reason why, you know, I, I first went to New York because I had, I was, you know, I had this idealistic, creative ambition, you know, uh, God knows what I was thinking. But I ended up going to, to winding up in L.A. because I, I realized, well, you know, New York is tough. It's hard to make money. It's always traveling. I wanted to go somewhere where I could make, settle down and stay in one town and, and work, in a stu work in studios play on movies and TV and records and stuff. And so that's why I came to L.A. And, uh, but you do a fair amount of jazz work, though. Yes, I do. And you know, I, I've kept that going, and, and that's what I started doing. And uh, that's, you know, I, you know we, with the writer strike we're having now, the, funny, the, the interesting thing about the studio business is that you know, there's, there's politics, there's a lot of factors, technology, a lot of things converging on the business. And it's not always going to be there. It, you know, a person has a good run. I mean, Jim's probably, you know, been doing it longer than anyone, but but you know some people do it for a while, and then you know politics or whatever for whatever reason. But you know this is hap this is I've experienced this a little bit too in my career. But I tell people it's fine because you know as musicians we reinvent ourselves, and we you know we don't rely on the studios or the movie business or the TV business to to make our music. We we just do it because because that's what we do. And I tell people you know it's great because I have my jazz career to fall back on. <laughs> so. I'm gonna keep that going, you know. I got that going for me, you know, which is nice. Probably ten really good bass players. Uh, what's so great about having Dave is that he's one of the truly great artists on both the upright and the electric, the six-string electric. And uh, I just sitting back listening to that beautiful solo you just played. It's, uh, I want to play the flute that way. I just want to respond to that. Thanks. I, that's such a great compliment coming from Jim because I've admired Jim, you know, since I was well. He moved to LA in 1985 in a midlife crisis, and I was getting yelled at by Buddy in 1985 <laughs> on the bus. But I was listening to Free Flight, you know, on, on, on the CDs on the um, with Milcho, and, and uh, I think Peter Erskine was a, yeah. an early member too. But uh, Jim, Jim, Jim Lacefield, who was the original bass player, I have to yeah. just comment that he, he was the original player, and he was a big influence on me as well. He's one wow. of the great bass players. Wow. And Los Angeles studio bass players, and the guy was just like phenomenal. So, um, you know, I was a fan of the band before I got to join, so I mean, wow. I'm really proud to be here. It's, it's great to be playing with Ralph and Jim and Mike, and it's a dream come true for me.